is what's the purpose? You know what I mean? And it's like you're, I'm looking at that and seeing my, you know, it's real. Just like I said earlier, like, it was happening all the time, but Jesus was walking through the place. I saw it. I saw it. It was more than a feeling. It was something I saw. It resonated in spirit. And he was just delivering himself through, smiling away. And then he said, Who do you think really recognized me? And then when John got what he got, it just confirmed what John had said. You know, two people in the back with white garments, the rest were stained. And it's a concern. You know, if you don't, from stealing, dealing, and reeling to believe in, believe in what? The belief in the resurrection. Believe in the resurrection. That he's given us something from it. Amen? Something from it. We all think of resurrection and we think we're saved, we're going to go to heaven and sit on the cross. That's not what it's all about. Really, I think of being alive, they don't know exactly what it's about. They're going to tell you what they thought, they're going to tell you the revelation God's given them. Nobody really knows. We have to experience it ourselves, right? But there's so much more to the resurrection. Let's go to John chapter 21. This is uh, 12 through 14. And it's interesting because this uh, chapter is called Breakfast by the Sea. It starts with verse 12. It says, Jesus said to them, Come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Praise God. Resurrected. The resurrected Lord. Okay? It's not Jesus that they were walking with while he was alive. He died and he was resurrected into this new being. This new being, and they dare not say, who are you? They dare not, not say, who are you? But let alone, here he is, the king of glory. The king of glory, serving breakfast to those that failed him. He's the king of glory now. He perceived, he pressed on, he pressed through. He died, he rose from the dead. Now he's now he could have just said, listen, I've done everything I need to do. Go do something. What did he do? He kept doing what he's always was doing. He served. He served in the glory. The king of glory served breakfast to those that failed. That just, when I really, really absorbed that into my head, it blew my mind. He just died for you and me. He died for our sins, and now he's raised up. And you read the story before that. I just wanted to give you those verses, but your reason, he even got the fish for them, told them where to throw the net. Brings it all together, serves them breakfast, those that fail him. And as you read on, and I'm going to read on through here, but through that, he brings true repentance to Peter for what Peter denying him, right? As it was in the song, you know, the shame, the guilt. As they were alive and everything was cool. Yeah, Lord, we got you covered, man. I got you. You ain't dying. I'm dying before you die. Yeah, Peter, well, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, Peter, you're going to deny me three times before the rooster crows. It ain't happening. Apple. Apple. So now just think about Peter and how he felt. The guilt and the shame. The guilt and the shame. He had to follow through with his words and what he said. You see, God gives us wisdom, but, you know, like seven prophets, I don't know if it was today or yesterday, but God gives us wisdom, but without... Without understanding, wisdom really is nothing. Okay, A lot of us think we have wisdom, but then if we lose out on the understanding, which is being a good servant in who you are and doing the things you need to do and all the things that you need to put into perspective, that's the understanding of the wisdom. God will give us wisdom. He gave it to Solomon, but there came a point in time where Solomon ripped it away from the understanding and everything fell apart. That's what he talks about in Ecclesiastes. 
Nothing matters, he says, as he goes through the times of trouble. Nothing matters. Everything's vanity. It's like chasing the wind. The only thing that matters is fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. But the fear isn't to be scared, right? It's not to be scared. It's to be in awe in who he is. And here he is, our king of kings, the king of the king of kings, the Lord of Lords, is serving breakfast to those that failed. Serving breakfast to me and you. Serving us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But it's interesting because they said, this is the third time he showed himself, right? There's a, there's a reassurance. They're just not quite sure, you know, what's going on here, you know? But when they dared, they didn't dare to ask, who are you? They didn't dare to ask because why? Because it says they knew him. They knew him. But see, that's the question I ask to you and I ask to myself. Do we know him? Do we know him? Do we really know him? Are we meditating on a day like today, like David was talking about, just enjoying the day, or are we moving in stuff to move all left and right all over the place under the sun with your mindset and somewhere else? Can we not take the time to meditate on what he did today? And like David said also, People are celebrating it all over the place. Celebrating how? The way the devil wants them to celebrate. Amen. The way the enemy wants them to celebrate. Because it feels good. It feels good. I was in those celebrations before I was saved. And 99.9% of the time I had to be high in order to enjoy myself. And it was deception. I wasn't really enjoying myself. Living a life of hell. Stealing, dealing, and reeling. There was nothing good in it. It felt, with the feeling, sometimes it felt good, but that always went away. Because the enemy was taking, doing everything that was part of it. There was nothing good in it, you understand? So when we're in that place, we also use the word Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Ishtar. Happy Ashropole and Baal. Happy, happy, all these things. And listen, don't get me wrong, I still fall into saying that now and then accidentally because I was kind of put in the mindset to say it for 35, 40 years of my life. So it's hard to get that out of your mindset. But if it does come out now, it's like, oh, happy resurrection day. See, because there is a difference. There is a big difference. There's a big difference. And it has to do if you know him. Because if you know him, then you understand what resurrection is about. What resurrection really is about. But again, if you look at the surveys, that's what you got. You got all these people that say that they are Christians, but they don't even believe in the resurrection. Praise the Lord. So then what was the resurrection for? What was the resurrection for? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that those who believe will not perish but have everlasting life. Let's get an altar call. Get everybody in here. Except Jesus into your heart. If, if, if it's in your heart. These are all things that we do for salvation. Amen? This is what we think resurrection is all about. I'm not saying it isn't, but there's so much more. Amen. You understand? And that's where people are left. They're left at the salvation part. They're left at the salvation part. But see, salvation is a direction to lead us into resurrection power. Amen. The resurrection. Listen. It changed those guys' lives. Twelve men. I preached the messages about the road to Emmaus. I preached the messages before about the twelve men, how they all ended up dying for Christ. How did this happen? How did it possibly happen if it wasn't true? You got 
12 men that ran scattered and then three days later were willing to die for Christ. Amen. Something happened. Something happened. They saw the resurrection, but like David said, when Thomas came to the point with Thomas, Jesus said, listen, you've seen and you believe, but blessed are those who haven't seen and believe. Amen. And that's for me and you stand today. Me and you stand today like they were every generation after the disciples. They have to believe because they haven't seen. But, ah, if you move from salvation, being saved, to resurrection, the born-again experience of resurrection power, God says, listen, I'll show you me. I'll show you me. You will know me. You will dare not say, who are you? Because you will know who I am. And I will reveal myself. I will manifest myself to you. But see, that ain't going to happen because if you're doing God maybe once a week for a half hour or doing the bingo games to raise some money for your, for, your, for your church. I mean, all this craziness going on, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But we get caught up in it just like we get caught up in the word Easter. We get caught up in the whole aspect of things that aren't real. That aren't really real in why we are here sitting here today and what we're doing. We're praising and worshiping God for bringing us into a resurrection power. Amen. At least I know I am. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. We have to live out the resurrection. You understand? We have to live it out. If we stay in that place of being saved and living that way. There's just so much doubt that comes upon us. We don't know whether we're coming or going anymore. So how do we live out the, res the resurrection? Every day, all day. Let's go to John chapter 11. This whole chapter has to do with Lazarus. Verses um, 1 through 4. We're going to start with 1 through 4, and then we're going to float around through certain verses in this chapter. 1 through 4, it says, Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Praise the Lord. Glorified through it. The glory. The glory. See, Jesus, Jesus glory, the glory was flowing through. He's doing God's will, not his own will. Oh my gosh, it's two days? I better run. Get over there. Not taking the time. We, we all have to, he took the time to listen to what God said, and this is what God was telling him. That he could be glorified in what was going to take place. The glory. He hadn't been resurrected yet, but he was showing us a parallel of resurrection. Of resurrection. The glory that comes with it. Glorified. Glorified. And Stay there, but switch over to John 17, 22. 17, chapter 17 is well known as Jesus' prayer, right? This is his prayer, his prayer for himself, his disciples, for all believers. Now, in verse 22, Jesus says, And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, just as we are one. I am going to 23 as well, I guess. And I, I am in you, that you may be made perfect in one, and that the, the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. The glory. The glory, the glory that Jesus is talking about, glorifying God and what happens with Lazarus. Jesus is praying that he, his glory is going to come to me and you. The glory comes to me and you. Amen. You see, that's just, 
as David was saying, mag to be magnified, that magnified everything. That is magnified in me. It's a magnifying that takes place that God, God, God so loved the world. God so loved us that he's bringing his glory into us. He's using us for his glory. Because of the resurrection. The resurrection takes place in us. In us. You see, a lot of us, we get into this place of being saved, and yeah, when I get up to heaven, everything's going to be good. There's a whole time frame between being saved and getting to the place to be with him. And that's the place Jesus wants us to understand. The resurrection power that's being given to us, the glory that he has is going to be given to me and you. We're glorified through him. We're glorifying him through us. Praise God. Amen. So now moving on to verses, we'll jump to 6 to 10. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was, God's will. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and you are going through there, there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, but he who sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. Praise God. Being the light. When we're moving in resurrection power and who he is, it's not that easy to stumble. And he gives us an understanding by the Holy Spirit on what we should do and what we shouldn't do. But do we have the Holy Spirit in us to give us enough strength to do what we need to do? Still moving in self. Jesus said, deny self, pick up the cross and follow me. You see, there's some denominations that, and don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with it. But again, we've got to progress from it, right? Right? They turn out for anyone you said for Jesus Christ and crucified. And they cling onto the cross. There's nothing wrong with it. Jesus said, Listen, deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow me. Move into the resurrection power. Move into the resurrection. Don't cling on to the point where you're scared to do anything. Don't cling on it so that you can't even walk on the property and poof, you're gone. What happens? There's no Holy Spirit. There's no resurrection power understanding. Yeah, there might be some wisdom in the words we say, but there's no understanding. Because the understanding has to go with the wisdom. Because the understanding is your walk. The wisdom is the knowing. Understanding is the walk. So when, I, when I got saved and delivered, it was all about resurrection power. Not that I wanted some kind of power in me with pride. No, it was resurrection power that, you know what? God changed me. So now there's things I got to do. And it ain't for me. It's for other people. And he's got to show the power. He's going to continue. He continues to heal me and show the power through me. The resurrection power. That's for each and every one of us that really believe. Amen. That really believe that are moving in the faith that he told Thomas. That's the big difference. Falling on our feet, falling on our head. Put over to Psalm 116. Eight and nine. This is on my heart. I speak it every day. Just for the forgiveness that you give me. 89, for you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I'm going to walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I'm going to walk in his faithfulness, his healing, his deliverance, walking in his light and his resurrection power. The resurrection. 
He's resurrecting us, and he's showing this as he's moving through Lazarus and doing everything he's doing. It's to show us who we are now here on earth as it is in heaven. Praise the Lord. So and then let's jump over to there's one of the verses I want to read them all. So let's jump over to verse 20. 22, 27. So then Martha, as she heard that Jesus was coming, but Mary was sitting in the house. She said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Praise the Lord. Interesting, the first thing is here is it was when, when Martha and Mary were having that little thing. Mary was at Jesus' feet. Martha was busy doing her thing. And Jesus, Martha, 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 we only knew. Well, I think Martha knew. Because Martha was the first to run out to him. There was a transition, a growth, a sanctification in knowing who she was. As she ran out to Jesus. When Jesus said, listen, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. The life. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Whoever lives, whoever believes shall never die. Do you believe this? I know I'm never going to die. I'm never going to die. What is death? Is death really? Death is described by the medical field as stop breathing. Your brain stops, you're dead. Right? That's that. That's not what Jesus is talking about. That's not who we really are. We have to believe. We really have to believe that we're never going to die. Right. Unless he comes beforehand and we get raptured, these, we're going to leave off of this flesh. We're going to leave off the flesh. But we're going to be in spirit, out of bodies to be in the spirit, Paul says. To be with him. Right. So we have to believe this or not. There's no in-betweens. So if you're in-betweens, you're already falling into the knot. Amen. Praise the Lord. And interesting enough, when I look up the word resurrection for a definition, what I got was one of the definitions was rising from decay and disuse. Resurrection is rising from decay and disuse. Praise the Lord. Stealing, dealing, and reeling. Takes me out of that. The disuse, the decay that was happening in my life and our lives and brings us into a place of resurrection. Bringing a resurrection power from within us for what he did. The power is in me and you. Me and you. Do you believe? Do you believe? I'm saying I'm willing to say at least half, maybe more than half the people in here did not resonate, understand, and get the experience of Jesus passing through here today. What did you expect? Easter bunnies? <laughs> Eggs? Mm -hmm. A resurrection power. Mm -hmm. Don't you think Jesus is weeping? When you get into the next verses, but I mean, come on. Here we are. We got probably 85, 80, 85 percent of Christianity out there celebrating Easter, having Easter egg hunts. What do you think God feels? He gave us Hosea to look at to how he feels. How would you feel as a man if God tells you to go marry this prostitute and she's going to have kids and they're not yours, they're only God's? How would you feel? God told Hosea to do that. And then he said to speak it to Israel. This is how I feel by what you're doing to me. You're idolatry. You're turning away from who I am. You're turning away from the resurrection power to look at an Easter bunny with eggs. 
it's pretty much destroyed what it's really all about. Unless you take the time, you take the time to know him. Or you dare to ask, like, do I, who are you? Do you know him? Can you have breakfast at the sea with Jesus? He serves us. That meditation, that understanding on a day like this, to just resonate in, to just sit back and soak in it. And let him speak to you in revelation and understanding on how much he loves you and how much you can bring that love back to him because you start to understand with the wisdom. Because, yeah, you can throw wisdom at you all day long. It's like Elder Ron said, he was up for this school and everything else, but then when he went to this Bible study, then he went to the first time, things changed. Something happened. He knew him. He knew him. Same thing happened to me. I knew him. I know him. How can I toss him aside once I've known him? 52 years of the runs, known him and lived for him. Praise God, he keeps me going that long. Pray for rapture first. <laughs> but praise the Lord. How does that happen? It happens because we know him. Because we're moving in the resurrection of understanding and who he is. Not just being saved. I shouldn't say just being saved. It's the saved isn't all of it. Listen, I don't want to um, deflate what that really is. Salvation is everything. But there's so much more with that. Jesus did not want us to stop there. He saved us for a purpose. He saved us for a reason. He saved us to move into resurrection of understanding what that power is. The saving gives us connection with God. That's what the saving's all about. And the only way we can get that connection with God is through Jesus, who's in between us and God. And if I don't know him, and I'm not praying through him, then God isn't hearing me. He isn't hearing any of us from that perspective. Because that's another part of the reason why Jesus came. The salvation, the connection, the distribution of his glory. Of his glory. Let's go to verse 32. To 35. Then when Mary came, Mary shows up, and she came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And then the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Okay, now, in these verses, we have to understand a couple things. There's two different meanings in these words that are taking place. When it says that they were weeping, right, in, in uh, first, first, 33, Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, okay, the word weeping here comes from the word kaleo, K-L-A-I-O, and that means to loud wailing. Oh! Just, you know, you just start 
welling up. You know, you're, you're not showing anything loud. There's no emotion. It's coming from within, but it's loud inside. Amen. You know, and that's what Jesus was doing as he's watching all this wailing going on. But it's interesting because let's go to Isaiah 53 3 and stay here. Just flip over. 53 3. This is prophecy about Jesus. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. There was a sorrow, a man of sorrow and grief. So now there's a, this is what's happening in him. There's a, there's a sorrow, a genuine sorrow happening in Jesus and a grief as he's looking at the whale. The whale. And what? What does he sorrow about? He, he's upset. There's an upsetting about the disbelief. The disbelief. You see, this happens, I don't want to go on a rabbit trail, but this happens when, when our loved one of ours dies and they're a believer in Jesus Christ. Yeah, we're going to mourn, right? But, but the wailing shouldn't really be there. It should be more of a sorrow. Why ain't I going with <laughs> You know, they're going to the place that I'm waiting to go to. But our mindset doesn't go there. We go into the flesh with the loud wailing, right? We go into the loud wailing, and we stay in there. And some people stay in there for years. They don't let go of the emotional attachment. It keeps being brought up, brought up, brought up, and brought up. And we, listen, you're going to live in that. It's not a healthy place to be. Amen. Praise the Lord. So Jesus, I believe, is still looking at not only that, but the sorrows of the effect of sin in the world. Looking at the sin in the world and what's happening around him. I mean, he's, remember, he's God. And he's also man. But he's come on earth to see all the garbage that's on this planet. And he's grieved. Grief of the garbage. And also for his love for Lazarus. I mean, that's the same, it's the same thing too, right? There's a, a filet of love there. He knew Lazarus. Praise the Lord. Yet, yeah. in saying this, the weeping and Jesus wept. In between, it says, as he watched them weeping, he says, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Now, groaning here comes from the Greek word, you say it, I don't know how you pronounce it. Embromeo <laughs> hail. Embromeo hail. It's E M B R I M A O M A I. And what does it mean? It means to express anger. And they had a saying back then about the word, and it meant to snort like a horse. Just a grow of an anger, a snorting of the horse, because they're wailing about something. When he said, listen, Lazarus is going to be glorified. Lazarus is going to come back. He's going to be glorified. God is going to be glorified, I should say. God is going to be glorified through him, through Jesus. But the snorting of the horse, I thought, was ironic, because that's what happens. You know, if you, I mean, you get the snorting of the horse, expressive anger, and the anger isn't a bad, mad anger, it's an anger like, man, couldn't there be more sorrow and grief and understanding with the wisdom that you think you're getting? The word trouble, so he's groaning. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled. The word trouble, the, the Greek word is tareso, T-A-R-A-S-S-O, -S -S and it means a strong emotion. A strong emotion, in this case, a strong emotion of anger at sin and death. Anger at sin and death and the unbelief. Anger of what Satan has done. How he manipulated us and deceived us into this place of death. So they're wailing, but Jesus is snorting like a horse. Like today. Walking in this life, doing the things we do, right? I mean, we're being led, and then all of a sudden something happens to somebody that we care about, you know, or somebody that we've 
come close to, and all of a sudden, boom, you know, there's no understanding. The wisdom's out the window, and they're, they're gone. What happens? Well, what should happen, there should be a snorting of the horse. A snort like a horse. There should be an anger, an anger, of how the enemy can use it. The enemy uses and takes us and pulls us away from God. See, this is part of the resurrection, what it really is. When you're resurrected with resurrection power, that's what we're focused on. We're not focused on self. But we're also not wailing and weeping. We're snoring like a horse. Praise the Lord. So let's move on to verse 38. Come over to 38. And we'll go right to 44. Then Jesus again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of whom of him who had, was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there's a stench, for he's been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent. Now when he said, said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. Praise the Lord. What did Jesus say? Believe. Believe, and you will see the glory of God. Believe. Believe. Believe is to follow, amen? Believe is to pick up the cross and follow. So as we believe and we follow, we're going to see the glory of God. See what? See resurrection. See resurrection power in us. So that we can believe it to see it, and it's the glory of God that's given us the strength to get through this, to get through this life. Listen, without him, this life is a, is a horror show. It's a terror. People living in fear. People living through all the time. Putting diapers on their face. Anywhere you go, you see diapers on people's face, there's fear. You had 15 shots, all the fun you could get, and you still wear a diaper. Oh. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it's, it is what it is. Jesus said, if you believe and you see the glory, you'll see the glory of God. You'll see the resurrection. What's the worst can happen? I can die. Is that worse? No. It's only the beginning. <laughs> I mean, it's a mindset change. When we go from salvation and move into the resurrection power. Hallelujah. That's what resurrection is all about. And it's interesting, you know, you see, you bring him back from the dead. He brings us back from the dead. Amen. From the stealing, dealing, and reeling to believe in. But believe in the resurrection. So he can bring me from the dead. He can bring you from the dead. To bring you to a life of resurrection. Taking you out of the decay and the disuse. To bring you into a place of purpose. That's what the resurrection is all about. Power. But interesting. This all takes place. I'm not going to get into verses, but I'm going to give you the subtitles. The subtitles here in four that starts at verse 45 says, all this takes place, and now there's a plot to kill Jesus. And then if you move on into chapter 12, and verse 9, the subtitle there is, a plot to kill Lazarus. So all the religious people, all the people of the world, say, listen, I don't know what happened here, he just raised this guy from the dead, but we need to kill both of them. <laughs> we got to stop this. This is crazy. And if you read it for yourself, it's basically what they're saying. 
not even believing what they're seeing. Could you imagine Jesus? He's got to be scratching his eyes. What do I need to do? <laughs> guy's been dead four days. He's probably like a dead, dead rat in an air duct. You open that, you open, roll that stone away, what happens? And they want to kill him because they have no understanding. They have a lot of wisdom who God is, but there's absolutely no understanding. No understanding because God was right in front of them and they didn't even see it. Whereas the disciples dared not to say, who are you? Because they knew him. But that's the difference between us now and in this day and age. A lot of us that say we're Christians, we don't really know him. We're living in the religious aspect of a wisdom of understanding. We're not moving in the resurrection power. But God pulls you out of that stuff. And if he pulls you out of that stuff, man, there's a gratefulness for that. There's a gratefulness that he opens our eyes to see. We get to see now, spiritually, what's taking place. So why would I want to do anything else? Why would I want to do anything else? Because you don't understand the resurrection, that's why. You're not moving in the resurrection. That's why. You've got wisdom and no understanding. That's why. These are reasons why. This is what happens when we don't really understand what today's all about. It's the beginning which leads to Pentecost. But he breathed the spirit onto those men. They give them an understanding. They're not raising any questions. Jesus showed himself three times to these guys. Now, this is the third time. They're having breakfast at Denny's. <laughs> and Jesus is the cook. He served. He's serving me and you that have failed him over the years. He's serving us even in his glory. That's how much he loves us. Praise the Lord. We gotta see that for what it is. It's not getting any better. They plot to kill Jesus then. It's not any, getting any better now. That's why it's like, you know what? It, it, I storm like a horse when I see the things that, get, that, that are being done. It's like, man, you got wisdom. You can't say you're not getting wisdom here. You're getting wisdom from a lot of different areas of biblical understanding spiritually. So you're getting the wisdom. Why are you not moving with the understanding? Get in a better understanding of the resurrection and who you are in him. We need to get that better resurrection power in us. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Let's go to Philippians chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. If you can uh, bring up the NLT version, I kind of give you a better understanding. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that one way or another I will experience the resurrection from the dead. Paul wants the experience. Paul wants that experience. It doesn't matter. Suffering doesn't mean the same anymore. Suffering does not mean the same anymore if you've experienced the resurrection power to bring us from the dead. Just like the scripture says, what can man do to me? What can man do to me? Destroy the flesh? You can't take, you can't separate me from God. You can't separate me from his love. As we experience that resurrection power, we experience it more and more. Paul, that's all Paul wants to do. He wants to experience. He wants to know the mighty power. He wants to know the mighty power that raised him from the dead. Raised him from the dead and given to us that we can be glorified. Jesus said in John 17, 22, right? He prayed to God. As you glorify me, you glorify them. The glory is in us. The glory. The glory to what? To do what you want to do? When you want to do it? How you want to do it? No. The glory is his will in our life. Every day. Every day, all day. Lazarus was sick. Jesus waited two more days. God says, wait, you wait. Why? Because there's a purpose for it. He's going to be glorified for it. God gets glorified from them. But when we jump the gun and do stupid things, that's what happens. It's our will. We take it back, not God's will. 
Praise the Lord. We have to embrace the born again experience. We got to embrace it. We got to hold on to that experience that takes place of who we are. When we really embrace the resurrection power of Christ, it's hard to run away from that. It's hard to run away from it. I have a hard time understanding because I just don't get it. I've been around 52 years. I mean, I just don't get it. Why would you? Well, this is why, because you haven't experienced the resurrection power. That's what God's showing me. Yeah, you've got salvation, you're saved, but if you stop there, that's all you're going to have. This life's going to be difficult. Praise the Lord. Romans 9, verses 1 through 3. tell you the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and continual grief in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my countrymen according to the flesh. See, this is Paul speaking now. Showing us what resurrection really is all about. Show and resurrection, what it's really about. Having the sorrow and the grief for those that just ain't getting it. There's a sorrow and a grief inside where I'm snorting like a horse for those that just ain't getting it. It's like, man, Lord, why? Why is it so easy for some and so difficult for others? Why, Lord? Well, there's a whole thing, list of things, why? Well, it all ends with self. It all backs up to self. It all backs up to yourself. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, glorified in the resurrection, served those who failed him. Served. So in order to serve, Jesus wasn't looking at himself. It wasn't about self. It was about serving. And yeah, it's a process. But if you ain't hearing what good is it? <clears throat> if you ain't hearing and taking it and putting action into it, what good is it? Snore like a horse. He wept. He wept with an anger. Unbelievable how this sin is destroying people and they don't even see it. I mean, you see that now. We see that out in the world. You don't have to go very far and just walk across the street or go down the street. You're going to see it. People are so messed up, it's pathetic. They have no Jesus in them, they don't understand. So if you just get into their head for five minutes, you wouldn't believe the stuff that's probably going on in there. The horror, the fear, the terror, the worry, all these different things that are taking place in that person because they don't know him. Even the ones that say they do know him, when they're moving in wisdom without the understanding of the resurrection power, they're still in that place. And when that, re what, that resurrection power resonates is what Paul is saying. Listen, you, in order to have resurrection, resurrection power, you have to serve. In order to serve, you have to have that sorrow and grief for those that ain't getting it. There's got to be a snorting of the horse in who we are. My God, what are they going to do? When are they going to get it? Jesus said this. He said, Lord, how much longer must I be with them? Praise the Lord. That's the gift. It's a free gift. The resurrection power, the salvation, take us in the direction of resurrection power is the free gift of sorrow and grief. And that equates compassion and love. Sorrow and grief, compassion and love, they go hand in hand. But it's a true compassion and love. Not what is in it for me. Or how about this? Or how about that? I just, it, it, I snore like a horse when I hear that. It's like, what, what else can I do?
But that's the special gift. And that gift goes along with our gifts. See, God gives us gifts. My brother and one of my sisters are awesome artists. David's an awesome artist. You know, it's not something that you learn. It's something that you're born with. It's a gift. Most people, almost all people I've ever known, it's a gift. Because I'm still drawing stick men. <laughs> so, yeah, your brother's a good artist. Yeah, I know so am I. Look. Uh... <laughs> I didn't have the gift. You had the gift. We all have a gift, though. It doesn't matter. Listen, <laughs> if we think it has to be a certain kind of gift. Look at Stephen. Look at Stephen. He was mighty by the Lord. He was serving tables. The disciples got seven men to serve tables, and Stephen was one of them. They said they were filled with the Holy Spirit, glorify the resurrection power of God, and look at what happened to that man. 2,000 years later, it's written in the Word of God. Jesus is talking about him. Everybody's talking about him. And he was a waiter. He was a waiter. So it doesn't matter what your gift is. I don't have the gift of drawing. God gives us something, and we have to move in it. But we really can't move it if we don't take from salvation into resurrection and do what he wants us to do. Not what we want to do. we got to get rid of it. Get rid of self completely. Deny self. Pick up the cross and follow him. Don't cling to the cross. Pick it up, hang on it, and follow him. Move with it. Move with it in the direction he wants you to move with it. That's the resurrection power. The resurrection problem. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to close <clears throat> this part. We'll come back after dinner. <laughs> Jeremiah, Jeremiah 9, verses 23 and 24. Honey, if you could put the NLT version up on that one, too. This is what the Lord says. Do, don't let the wise boast in their wisdom, or the powerful boast in their power or the rich boast in their riches. But those who wish to boast should boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth, and that I delight in these things. I, the Lord, have spoken. Right there, you dropped the mic. There's nothing else to say. The Lord spoke. What he's looking for and what he's not looking for. That's the power of the resurrection. The power of the resurrection is to have that love and compassion, that sorrow and that grief for those that aren't getting it. That you snort like a horse when you realize that these things are happening. And you do what? You don't run after them and save them because you can't do it. What do you do? You pray for them. The prayer of a righteous man availeth much and pray for them. Amen. There comes the resurrection power, the prayer. The power in the prayer. Because that's what God wants. That's where the understanding comes with the wisdom. Amen? Amen. So happy resurrection day. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the beautiful day you've given us the fellowship, Lord, and we have together here. And we can speak about you, Lord, and try to incorporate more of you in us and less of us. Father, bless the rest of this day together with all of our fellowship, Lord. Lord, that um, there be travel mercies on those that have come from afar, that you would guide them and direct them back home safely when they leave later. And Father God, I ask that you bless the food that's been prepared for our bodies and nourishment. And Lord, bless our week ahead, Father God, that there be favor and protection on all of us, Father God, as we leave this week to give you glory. 